Across the nation and even around the world. For we are a hungry people, Lord. We are a needy people, Father. A desperate people, Lord Jesus, for just more of you, Almighty God. Father, we pray, Lord, that the Jubilee will be on, Father. That the Holy Convocation will be on, Lord. That every seed will drop into that eighth day Holy Convocation. The Holy Ghost itself will leave this place changed. Oh God, we're here, Lord. We're just the Holy Ghost himself to bring us into that unity of the faith. The prophet restored the faith, but the Holy Ghost itself will bring that unity, that oneness, Father. And it can only be done by divine love. So, Father, may you give us an overflowing baptism of divine love. Father, may the honey just flow all through the place. We commit ourselves, Lord. Your servants are reporting for duty. May it be like on the Emmaus Road that our hearts would just burn within us as you speak to us along the way this morning. We commit ourselves and commit the service to you, the hearing and reading of your precious word. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God. You may be seated. Let's just give him one more thank offering. I appreciate that. Lord, take me back to that first love. And I have pledged allegiance to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Praise God. You may be seated. I have appreciated the service, the singing, the specials, and the worship, and Brother Coleman's uh, remarks and greeting. Actually, I could just say amen and quit right now, Brother Coleman. You actually took Christ the mystery of God revealed, and that's what I wanted to open with, and the mighty God unveiled, and that's what I'm going to finish up with. So he preached the sermon for me already. We could just say amen and go on to lunch. Would that be okay? Hallelujah. God is so good to us. And just wanted to bring greetings from my wife and family and the little end time gospel church in Fort Wayne. And salute brother and sister Coleman and the New York church. And say thank you. And God bless you. And we appreciate your love and sacrifice to have another convention and inviting all of us to come and be here and share in this tremendous victory in the love divine. Thank you from the depths of our heart. Amen. First Thessalonians 5 and verse 12 says, Know them that labor among you and are over you in the Lord, and admonish you, and esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Hebrews 6.10, For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which you have showed toward his name, in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. So again, we would just like to say thank you, Brother and Sister Coleman, and these. it was our privilege to meet him and get to know him and be friends with him since 1964, so basically 33 years. And for Brother Coleman to give me this privilege to just salute the prophet and give my testimony, I deem it a great honor. And we say thank you once again, and God bless you from the depths of our heart. Hallelujah. Just wanted also to greet all the ministers and the churches and the individuals and 
those that will hear these tapes and just say, God bless you. I believe that we are astronaut in the astronaut age, in our astronaut, which is Jesus Christ. So why not just blast off this morning? Forget about it. If I could just say it this way, we are not in Harrisburg. We are not in Pennsylvania. We are in Christ. And that means heavenly places. Amen. That means we're astronauts. Praise God. So just let that fire take us into heavenly places. And amen. Just get in orbit around him and everything else fades away. I believe that harvest jubilee is on. That we're in the greatest hour of world's history. Amen. And time for the redeemed to come forward by manifestation. Amen and amen. While you're standing, could we just turn to Colossians chapter 1? Amen. Brother Coleman said he didn't want me to get too excited. Amen. Uh, with the heart condition, I just believe that the Lord has healed it. The doctor the other day went back and he gave me an EKG and he says them lines are almost perfect. But I feel perfect in Christ Jesus. <laughs> Praise God. Colossians chapter 1, verse 17 to 19. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. Amen. Praise God. Verse 26. Even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. Made manifest to his saints. To whom God would make known what is the richest, of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you. That's my promise, Christ in me. The hope of glory, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. In chapter 2, just verses 2 and 3, that their hearts might be comforted. Aren't you thankful for the comfort? That their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding To the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Hallelujah. In 1 John 3. In verse 9 and 10, Whosoever is born of God doth not sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. In this the children of God are manifested, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God neither he that loveth not his brother. You may be seated, and may God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Doesn't that make you feel good? Whoever is born of God does not commit sin. You can't even sin if you want to. You can't disbelieve this word if you want to. You might make all kind of mistakes, but you can't sin because the seed of God is in there. It wasn't put in there. 
yesterday, 10 years ago, it was put in there before the foundation. You rotated off of him. Hallelujah. Praise God. So for a text this morning, is I would like to just use Christ remains. Christ remains. And for an inspiration, acknowledging the mystery of Christ. Acknowledging the mystery of Christ. Amen? And then for a subject, climax, just to kind of finish and tie everything back together, the unveiling of Christ. So this morning, Christ remains. We should be, if we're not, we should be the happiest people in the world. Hallelujah. He's given us a half an hour. He held back everything. 200 million demons was there on the attack, but they couldn't find you because he had you veiled. He had a masterpiece in his mind. He has been chipping away everything that was unlike him so that now there's only one thing left. Christ remains. Heaven and earth will pass, but you cannot pass away because Christ remains. Let me say this. Let the dogs bark, but the caravan moves on. It doesn't matter what's happened. It doesn't matter what you've been through. It doesn't matter the trials you face. I don't care if your world has fallen apart. God's able to put it back together again because Christ remains alive the same. Man, I don't care where you were. He led captivity captive gave gifts unto men. Thank you, Jesus. There was something about that sea, Christ, that had an endurance, had representation by predestination. Regardless of what happened, regardless of what you went through, maybe your family fell apart, but Christ remains. Maybe your world fell apart, but Christ remains. Maybe the church fell apart, but Christ remains. Maybe your health fell apart, but Christ remains. And remember, I will restore, saith the Lord. In the good times, Christ remains. In the bad times, Christ remains. So whether you have been understood or misunderstood, it doesn't matter. Christ remains. Oh, I love what he told Abraham. The promise was made to him and to his seed after him. And thy seed is Christ. You couldn't sin. You couldn't disbelieve this message. You couldn't disbelieve the promise of God. The whole world holding on to a sensation or an emotion. And here you were being kinos, being filled with the Holy Ghost itself. Going to that angel every day, saying, give me that book, let me have some more. The letter was killing your flesh, but there was a seed on the inside. Christ remains.
There was a lot of mornings when we woke up and we felt like the biggest failures in the world, but Christ remains. One day after going through the greatest trial of my life and actually right in the middle of it, Holy Spirit came to me and said, never go on the defensive with anybody again about anything. You're my son. You make a mistake, repent. Somebody else makes a mistake, forgive. Because Christ remains. You know, I've got the quotes laying here to read it, but it doesn't matter if I read one or I don't read any. It doesn't matter. Because when once I know you've caught the inspiration that he laid on my heart, then we can walk out of this service today, Christ remains. It don't matter what you've been through, what has happened, the ups and the downs, the highs, the lows. Hallelujah. The failures you went through or the successes you've made, it doesn't matter. Only thing that matters is Christ remains. God pulled you and I out of Laodicea. And in his mind, he had a masterpiece. So he had to start chipping and chopping and cutting and hacking and honing and polishing because he had a masterpiece in his mind. He could just see inside that seat in your soul was Christ. One day, sooner or later, everything would be gone. Hallelujah. I have a revelation of redemption. That revelation of redemption spoke in my heart and said this. When God has eliminated, eliminated everything and nothing is there anymore, everything has been eliminated and just Christ remains, then we'll stand there fully redeemed in a manifestation of sons and daughters of God. Redemption. The process whereby everything is eliminated. All fear, gone. Love casts out fear. Hallelujah. Christ remains. His word stands. His promises are yea and amen. Something in your soul said, I don't know why I'm going through this, but he's got to have a purpose. Christ remains. See, it's easy for you and I because the seed is veiled inside. It's easy for you and I to worry about the badger skin. Born in sin and shaped in iniquity and come to the world speaking lies. So we're concerned. We go by feeling and memory and imagination. But one day, the Holy Ghost comes upon you, begins to wash all that away in this season of dynamics and nothing is left. Christ remains. See, when you hurt others, you can go back and repent because Christ remains. When others come to you, then you can forgive because Christ remains. Elect is not trying to persecute elect, but we have to remember on the other side, the prophet said it takes a diamond to chip a diamond. So God has been trying to chip you and I. So there's nothing left but the masterpiece and Christ remains. So don't discard your brother and sister. Remember, God ain't finished with you yet and he ain't finished with them yet. But one day he'll be finished. There'll be nothing left but Christ. 
Christ in me. Sometimes I get to feeling too good. I don't feel like preaching. I feel like singing. And this morning, I feel good. I feel good. Just to be identified with believers. I feel good. People know he's unveiled. Makes you feel good. definite identifications of the church the prophet said first teaching of that church was repentance and remission of sins repentance and forgiveness that's a nice thing about being associated and identified with people that know he's unveiled Christ remains they know there's something down in here there's seed of God Hallelujah. Repentance and forgiveness. And I said to the church the other day, that's the three steps of revival. Repentance, forgiveness, and restitution. Restitution is true Christianity at work. So the four R's used to be, or three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic. But I believe the three R's in the bride is repentance and remission and restitution, and then comes revival. I'm going to just take these quotes and just say them quick instead of read them, okay? These seven perfect spirits of God, this rainbow, in Hebrews book, page 345, just for the sake of the tape and those that would like to study it when you get home. The first color was red, perfect love, redemption. The first thing that represented redemption in the seals, page 111, he tore off the seals, sent it down to his seventh angel on the earth for that angel on the earth to give us all the mysteries. And that was the first representation of redemption. So for about a half hour, you haven't been under intercession. Hallelujah. But we've been under redemption. Something's been calling you back. Something says Christ remains. I'll come through this. I don't care what happens. It doesn't matter what takes place. The prophet said, those seven spirits represents the purity of God represents the motives of God and represents the attitude of God. Christ remains in you right now. Potentially, that seed in the soul is the very attitude of God. The very motives of God. But beyond that, the very purity of God. In Laodicea, you have to cheat to survive, but not in the bride. You don't have to cheat. Hey, because Christ remains and he won't let you. Purity of God. Oh, if I had the motives of God, I want to tell you something. That's God in you working his way out. They are in there. Christ remains. Page 3, 4, 5. After he talks about the purity of God, the motives of God, and the attitude of God that have come into you, and you realize it by the seven perfect spirits, then he says, the believer can't sin. The seed of God, the blessings of God remains on him. God can't see nothing but the blood of his own son. No matter what it is in his church, God don't see it. Because Jesus is making intercessions constantly. He's the high priest. 
See, love, which is that seed, which is Christ, love casts out fear. Sooner or later, if we stop worrying and looking at the flesh and looking at the mistakes and start looking at the lamb, looking at the promise, looking at who is in you, Christ in you. But if I could only feel him, it ain't the time. But today could be the beginning of that time. Hallelujah. Prophet told us, you've got the roughest, darkest hours to go through ever in the history of the world. But friends, we made it by the grace of God. Silence is over for about the space of half an hour. Now let the redeemed say so. Redemption is the process whereby he takes us back into perfect love. Adoption, page 128. This is what you taught was the Holy Ghost. This is perfect love. Seven steps, God bringing that love down, and then seven steps going back up. Oh, back into perfect love. Hallelujah. That's what's been in us, working its way out. You might have failed, the flesh might have failed, but he never failed. He's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. Three kinds of believers. Page 16. Job went through trials and tests. His children were taken and everything else taken. Church members come accusing him of being a secret sinner and tried to say everything against him, but he wouldn't listen to any of it. He knew he had met God's requirements. He knew there's no need of Satan trying to tempt him. He knew it was the devil. As long as Satan can make him believe that his sickness was God doing it, he had Job whipped. But when Job once struck that revelation that it was not God, he was only going through his trials to make him something. Doesn't matter what you have gone through, he will, you was only going through it for him to make you something. Because he has to take nothings and make something out of that. Empty vessels is what he promised to fill up. Same thing today. Satan will try to tell you these trials and things is God putting punishment upon you. It isn't so. No, sir. It's Satan doing that and God permitting it to temper you. You mean all that you've been through is just for God to temper you? You know how something gets tempered? It gets heated up till it's white hot. And then it's dropped in cold water and sizzled. But it has an effect on that steel. It makes it so hard that it won't bend anymore. It won't. He's only been trying to temper you. We're getting ready, friends. Hallelujah. Oh my, I brought it up here to read, but I'm not going to do it. But in a message, Easter message, page 62 and 63, Brother Branham was talking about Job. And he said, Job didn't know that God and Satan were having a debate. Job not knowing all these things going on, it brought the patriarch into deep distress. Yet somehow, when all was gone from him, he still maintained his position in Christ. I know my Redeemer liveth. Somehow, I believe we have come through our age, brotherly kindness. 
we manifested it in holy decency. But this meeting is for place in Christ. Christ remains. Every mystery, every promise Malachi 4 spoke is veiled somewhere. I want to read it to you when we get over there in a couple of minutes in Mighty God Unveil. Brother Brandon said, when you get a revelation of this message, these promises, you have become the veil. I see God failing here. Christ remains. He kept you going all this time. Much of the way there was only one set of footprints in the sand. He was packing you and I, but Christ remains. Job, Job maintained his testimony in Christ. That was the prophet's word. You have maintained your testimony. My, I had some quotes here to read from Statue of a Perfect Man. But I'm trying to get down to the climax quickly because it's already noon. So I'm going to hurry. I'll be done by 1230. Amen. I'm one of those kind now that's regulated. If it says 12 o'clock, fine. 1230, Brother Robledo said 1230, you'll be okay. 1230, I'm out of here. So you're going to have to listen fast. i got five hours worth of quotes and a half hour to lay them in. But all I want you to know is when you leave here, Christ remains. His word will not fail. Hey, hallelujah. Praise God. There's a bride on this earth that's veiling God. Now we've come to the unveiling of Christ. He is that mystery. Just give me five minutes in here. I believe God can do more in five minutes than what we've tried to do in the last half an hour. Stature of a perfect man. Page 59. Lust for money. Lust for big things. Lust for popularity. These things are dead to the believer. Because Christ remains. Because Christ remains. Ain't nobody around here that I know very popular. I know some targets of criticism, but I don't know anybody around here that's very popular. But I know one thing, Christ remains. His word still stands. His promises are still yea and amen. Hallelujah. These things are dead to the believer. We don't care. A tent or a cottage, why should I care? Live or die. Sink or drown. Christ remains. I hope you never forget those two words. Regardless of what happens to you next week or next month or next year, if the Lord tarries, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Live or die. Sink or drown. This is the thing I'm interested in, the kingdom of God. Whether I maintain my home. Bank could come in and take it over. Don't worry. God's got a purpose. He makes all things to work together for his good. Christ remains. House burns down. God got a better one in store for you. Christ remains. Whether I maintain my home, whether I maintain my family, you might have tried ever so hard. Don't worry. God is smart, and he's still boss, and Christ remains. Whether I maintain my home, whether I maintain my family, whether I main what, maintain whatever it is, let me maintain Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Christ remains. Build me up, O oh Lord, into this. Let Christ be my head. Oh, let Christ be my head. Let that capstone of love be my head. 
Hallelujah. Let Christ be my head. Let working through me on my foundation, my faith that's in him. Let virtue and knowledge and temperance and patience and godliness and brotherly kindness work in me. Oh, Lord, is my prayer. Oh, Lord, I don't care. Live or die, sink or drown, denomination or no denomination, friend or no friend. Let that work in me. Yes, Hallelujah. Let Christ's virtue and his knowledge flow out. That I may teach, though, for God has said in the church, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, for the perfecting and bringing all these virtues to that perfection of the coming of the Son of God. And Christ remains. All right. Paul, a prisoner. Pharaoh made Joseph his son, page 25. Christ makes his prisoners of love, prisoners of love. Christ makes his prisoners of love, his sons, and gives them power. And then the works that I do shall he do also. Hallelujah, you prisoners of love. I love what he said in Deity of Jesus Christ, page 12. All brother and sister, it's deity in you. Hallelujah. Not I'll walk with you, but you shall see me. I'll be with you, even in you, to the end of the age. See? Christ in the manger? No. Christ in you. We're not worshiping Christ in the manger, but Christ in you, the Holy Ghost, the hope of life. Hallelujah. The Creator God Himself dwelling in the human being. Just to share real quickly, what has happened in this last half an hour? Why did I go all of this through all this pain and suffering and misunderstanding and weary and discouragement? Could I just read it to you real quick? In the Church Ages book, page 116. God, does he hold back persecution? No. He simply says, I know your tribulation. I am not unmindful of your suffering. What a stumbling block this is to so many people. You see, Israel, they could not figure out God's love. They thought that love meant no suffering. They thought that love meant a baby with parental care. But God said that his love was elective love. He chose me. He chose you. Why do I care what I have to go through? I know he chose me. God said that his love was elective love. The proof of his love is election. If he justified you, he already glorified you. The proof of his love is election. No matter what happened, his love was proven truly by the fact they were chosen unto salvation. God hath chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. He may commit you to death as he did Paul. He may commit you to suffering like Job. That is his prerogative. He is sovereign, but it is all with a purpose. You see, Jesus learned obedience by the things that he suffered. He was actually made perfect by the things that he suffered. Jesus was? Jesus was? And we thought we was going to get a shortcut. Uh-uh. We had to come straight through the wilderness just like... Moses did in the first exodus. Jesus did in the second. And you and I did in the third. Let me read this to you. Page 117, Church Ages. In plain language, the very character of Jesus was perfected by suffering. 
And according to Paul, he has left his church a measuring of suffering that they too by their faith in God while suffering would come to a place of perfection. Our place in Christ had to be right down through this valley of the shadow of death. Unless we suffer with him, we cannot reign. You have to suffer to reign. See, the reason for that is that character simply is never made without suffering. Character is a victory, not a gift. The seed in your soul is the gift. But the character is a victory. You had to have something to overcome. That seed in your soul had to have something to overcome. And a man without character cannot reign. Whew. Read Revelations 1. Because power apart from character is satanic. But power with character is fit to rule. And he promised you would rule and reign with him. You're not going to get your character later in the millennium. You're going to get it now and take it with you. That's why he granted us a half hour. A half hour to go through the fiery furnace of affliction so we could come out on the other side and say, Christ remains. Let God be true. <laughs> then we have to overcome to set with them. The little temporary suffering we go through is not worthy to be compared to the tremendous glory that will be revealed in us when he comes. Oh, what treasures are laid up for those who are willing to enter into his kingdom through much tribulation. God wants to develop a Christ-like character that comes through suffering. The cloudy skies and storms of life are no signs of God's disapproval. Hear me and hear me well. Christ remains. The cloudy skies and storms of life are no signs of God's disapproval. Neither are bright skies and still waters signs of his love and approval. His approval of any of us is only in the beloved. His love is elective. He chose you and him before the foundation of the world. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, the countdown is on. I better skip that. All the countdown is, is for is to let you become more like Christ. Amen. See? Believe more and to be more like Christ. That's what the countdown was all about. Every step of it was to make you more like Christ. Then he said in page 13, he said, then once you get in there, in Christ, you don't care or even hear what the world has got to say because you are pressurized. Christ remains. I and you and you and me. He said, you're safe. You're tucked in. Something has happened and you know it's happened. But see, we're into a place now where we've got to have astronaut faith. That's astronaut power to realize that we are already in Christ. Not you're going to be someday. You're already in him and he's already in you. Just more of Christ to lift us into heavenly places. For Christ remains. Oh, hallelujah. Now do you understand why you've been through what you've been through this last half hour? How many know that Christ remains? He's still there. He didn't take a trip. He's not on vacation. He didn't leave. Oh my, Colossians chapter 2, I want to just take page 2, part 2, amen, Colossians 2 and verse 2, that their hearts might be comforted, hallelujah, because the comforter has come, being knit together in love, something about the headstone has drawn us together, amen, and unto all the riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgement of the mystery, 
and how I'd like to talk about it, but I don't have time. The acknowledgement of the mystery of God. Elohim. I like how Brother Branham explained it. To the acknowledgement of, of God, the mystery of God, and of the Father, and of Christ. He's not talking about Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. He's not talking about three guides. He's talking about God changing his mass. He said in Ephesians Parallels, Joshua, page 16. What? When did God choose us? You that have the Holy Ghost, when did he choose you? Before the foundation of the world. Before we go any farther, let's go back to Genesis 1, 21. El, Ella, Elohim. The word means the self-existence all by himself. So look at this right there. You have knowledge, the mystery of God. God is a spirit. But El, Ella, Elohim was the self-existent one. Genesis 1. But in Genesis chapter 2, he changed to Jehovah, the Father. JVHU. Bring it all the way over here to the third pool, and that new name will be revealed in the thunders. And you have acknowledged the mystery of the Father. The mystery of the Father is Jehovah. No longer God self existent, but now God dwelling with his attributes. God existing with his subjects, amateur gods. But then the third mystery is the mystery of Christ. The mystery didn't stop with Jesus Christ, he was the beginning of the creation of God. But the mystery that had been hid from all ages and generations. was Christ in you. Oh, he always causes us to triumph in Christ. Now, these mysteries in whom are hid, in, in God and in the Father and in Christ, in Christ, right, just God changing his mass, changing his dispensation, I heard Brother Branham say the other day, it's like God is a yardstick. The first foot was Father. Second foot was Son. And the third foot is Holy Ghost. But it's all one yardstick. Oh, my. Anyway, acknowledging the mystery of Elohim. Acknowledging the mystery of Christ. My, you can read it in, in James 3 and verse 17. This wisdom that is from above is pure and peaceable and gentle and easy to be entreated and full of mercy and of good fruits and without partiality and without hypocrisy. That's what's inside us, the purity of God, the motives of God, the attitude of God. For Christ remains. It's going to be, there's my spirit flowing freely, flowing from you and I like sparks from an anvil in this season of adoption. Thinking man's filter. Hallelujah. Three things Brother Branham struck there that really stuck out to me. He said, Jehovah of the Old Testament is Jesus of the New. He said right there in page 7, here came the Ancient of Days. After the Ancient of Days was the Red Heifer, page 18. You can read it. I don't have time. And then page 28, he said, I saw a 1,500-mile chunk of California slide into the ocean. The red heifer was just born in 1996 because a fixed half hour of silence was over. 66 when God took the prophet to 96, 30 years, about the space of a half an hour. You have seen the ancient of days. Now Israel is ready for the feast of atonement. But we go back to the original atonement, original apostolic everything. I don't have time, but just let me strike it real briefly. When Brother Branham began to talk about the Ancient of Days, the other day I was looking at it and studying it and pulled up all kinds of quotes. I have them all laying here. In there, the mystery was so beautiful. He said, one day the Holy Spirit told him, just turn the picture to the right. But before that, he said, now remember, 
Daniel saw the seven thunders in Daniel chapter 7. And he heard the seven thunders utter their voices. What did Daniel see in chapter 7? He saw the Ancient of Days. He said what Daniel saw is exactly what John saw in the book of Revelation. The Ancient of Days come down, the Son of Man clothed in a cloud. And a Son of Man on the earth revealing the Son of Man. The Ancient of Days. Oh my. Daniel saw it. He saw that cloud. He heard those seven thunders. He heard those voices. He couldn't explain it. John, over in Revelation chapter 10, exact same thing again. He heard those seven thunders. He saw the Ancient of Days come. The prophet said they saw the same thing and they heard the same thing. But in 1963, Brother Branham didn't see a vision of it. In the days of the voice of the seventh angel, he walked into the vision. He became the manifestation of the vision. When it was time for the Ancient of Days to come forth, the books were open, and he said that was the book of life, but another book was open, and that was the Lamb's book of life. And the mystery of redemption started on the earth to call out a bride and redeem her back. Redeem back to everything God promised you and me. The unveiling of God, page 40 and 41. The seven thunders. Oh my. I have it laying here. Page 40 and 41. Seven thunders. When he spoke this, it, it was a blessing to me the other day. They said, well, Brother Branham, them seven thunders. That voice thundered and he said, write it not, close it up. Seven thunders will be revealed in the last days. Seven thunders, they tell us, that, don't that sound real good? But watch what we're talking about. See, write it not. See, it's to be sealed up until the last day. Someone said, Brother Branham, if the Lord God, with the experience the Lord has given you for his people, humbly saying this, you're eligible to write a Bible yourself, the word that God has manifested. I said, that might be true. See, he was trying to catch me. I said, but you see, I couldn't do that. Why couldn't you? You have the qualifications. I said, but look, one word cannot be added or taken away. He said, well, then them seven thunders, you see, wouldn't them seven thunders blasting out, won't that be a revelation give to some man? I said, no, sir. It would be adding something or taking something from it. It's all revealed in there, and the seven seals opened up the revelation that it was. But the next page, page 41, it's still the same God. Amen? I hope that gets through. It's the same God. But he just takes on another veil. You didn't hear me. The Ancient of Days. Hallelujah. Right in there was all the wisdom and knowledge of all the ages. How could a humble little Kentucky prophet with a seventh grade education withstand the whole world and shut him down because it wasn't him. He didn't count on his own knowledge or wisdom. How could Moses write the Bible? Where or how did it come to him that he knew what day everything was created on? In there was hid all the wisdom and knowledge of all the ages. Then here come our prophet. Down came the Ancient of Days, opened every mystery, and God was unveiled. But what did he say? There's a bride on this earth, and in her is going to be the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So could I say it this way? 
The seven thunders are just God changing his veil again. Feast of the Trumpets, page 20. It's not going to be something strange or different. He said it's just going to be something that was hid in the book all along. Oh, my. Invisible Union, page 31 and 32. But he said in page 9, when the spiritual bride begins to have a revival, watch then. But page 32, he said, your new life is in the Lamb's book of life, and you're justified. And when the ancient of days came forth, those books were open. Oh my. Trying to get down to the climax. So Christ is here, and you have acknowledged the mystery. I like how he said it in page 75. Of Christ is the mystery of God revealed. Oh my. It was so powerful. He said, now, he had to redeem her, which is his body. She has to be redeemed in order to come to him. Do you see it? Oh, my. It couldn't happen then. The redemption is going on. Now, you see the seals? When he was in his mediatorial work back there redeeming. But someday he comes forth to get this book that he's redeemed. And all that's in this book will be him. Christ remains. All that's in this book will be him, for that's the believer. The word's in the book, and the word is him, and all that's in it, he came forth. This book of redemption. <laughs> Friends, you're not some little hope so, or maybe, or I would like to be. But he chose you in him before the foundation of the world. Brother Coleman referred to it a while ago. Question and answer on the seal, page 473. Nothing will be saved. Only those whose names were from the Lamb's book of life before the foundation of the world. Whether they be Jew or Gentile. That's all the book holds the mystery. And the book is unfolding it now. Not each one's name, but what the mystery of the book is while it's calling those names. The book doesn't say Lee Vale or Orman Neville or whatever. No, it don't say that. It just shows the mystery, unfolds the mystery of what the thing is, but we ourselves by faith believe it. Enoch, by faith, walked with God. Every morning when he got up, he said, I'm going to walk with God today. Friend or no friend. Family don't. Church don't. Nobody else does. I'm going to walk with God. Oh my, I have it here, Shalom, page 25. What was it? Jehovah, J-V-H-U, them seven angels to reveal the seven messengers down through the ages, the loose ends that Luther and Wesley left off. It's all represented in there, the great Shalom. See, he throwed it in the skies, and there is the mechanical eye taking a picture of it. Jesus is here. Book of Symbols, page 12. My, those seven seals on the back of the book. No man could open those seals. Here's the Bible written, which is a mystery itself. But on the back side of the Bible, the revelation was shown to Daniel. Seven voices to be uttered, and no man could open. No man knew what it was. But the Bible said it was told Daniel and John that in the last days, those seven voices would be known by the real, true church. The Ancient of Days. Showed you your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. The mysteries was revealed to you. And right now, hid in you is all the mysteries of Christ. The wisdom and knowledge of all the ages. And he you sat around here, brother, we got a right to rejoice. Let the redeemed say so. Jubilee, harvest, revival is on. And Christ is revealed in his own word. There's nothing left but him himself to step into the church with that intelligence. Hallelujah. Christ him, himself is that intelligence that's here now. Back to the Bible. Christ remains.
Would the musicians come? Hallelujah. Oh, my. I'm not going to do the third half, okay, or the third part. Christ remains. You're a part of the mystery. Now it's time for the unveiling of Christ. I don't have to preach that part. That part will become a reality throughout this week. Now the unveiling of Christ. Every mystery that has been veiled, a bride without spot and wrinkle, the redeemed are going to be saying so. That no, we have been redeemed by his blood. Brother, we over in Revelations 5, we can rejoice and enjoy the promises of God. Christ at 33. 33 years ago yesterday, Brother Branham right here in Pennsylvania prophesied about you. The mighty God unveiled. I'm talking about that God that changed to Jehovah, that changed to Jesus Christ, that has now become Christ in you. He's ready to be unveiled again. And when you get hungry in your soul, I said when you get hungry in your soul, there's a veil ready to be broke. Hallelujah, I'm the glory. I'm done, man. Let's worship God. Are you ready to worship King Lamb? Christ remains. somebody and say, brother and sister, I know Christ remains.
don't you love to praise him? Isn't he worthy? Hallelujah, worthy is the lamb that was slain. Oh, yes. Glory, give him glory. Hallelujah. Oh my, you come through hard times. You come through some good times. But all the time it was Christ in you, pulling you. Hallelujah. And you may have family and friends out there and everything's gone wrong. But that pull, wait till that third pull. It's going to pull because it's Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't you thank God you got Christ inside. He dwells in your heart today. Hallelujah. Oh, my. Oh, my, my. What a message. Christ remaineth. Oh, give God praise. Thank you, Jesus. Wonderful Lord. Hallelujah to God. Let's just praise Him. Oh, God is so good. Isn't He good now? Don't you love Him for His grace? God is so good. It was Christ. God. good to me. I got something to praise him for today. I love him so. I love him so. Don't we appreciate Brother Dillard and the Fort Wayne Church today? Thank God for the message that he brought this morning. said and done. Amen. Brother Branham said when all the battles are over, hallelujah on that wonderful day and everything's finished and done and you're sitting there at that table, there's only one that's going to walk down and dry your tears. Amen. I long for that day. I long for the day I'll turn and see my Savior's face and he'll say don't cry no more. It's over now. Amen. You're home with me. You go out no more. It'll be war no more. It'll be just Christ. 
Amen. Wonderful. Thank you, Brother Dylan. Praise God. My, what a service. Praise Almighty God. Amen. Uh, this afternoon, a service uh, will start at uh, 3.30, and the doors will open at 3.00. So it gives you time to uh, have, a, have your feast, amen, and uh, time to pray and, get, and come back. So we trust this afternoon will be a, a blessing to you, and God will bless our little time together. Amen. Praise God. Let's, let's talk to our maker now. Almighty God. We're grateful to have be, been here this morning to feel such a, a tremendous anointing of worship in a presence of the Lord. Lord, your people are free. They're here to glorify you and to worship you and to receive from your hand. Lord, we ask you, bless them now as they go, Lord, and have their times of fellowship together. And Father God, as we come together this afternoon, we believe, Lord, that it will go even a whole rung higher, Father, in the worship and the praise and in a revelation of who we are and of who you are, Lord. And the shouts and the praises will ring throughout the corridors of this place, Lord. Bless your people now and bless Brother Dillard, Lord God. May you strengthen him. Lord, thank you for restoring his strength, Lord. He preached like a 20-year-old man, Father. Bless him in his church, Father. May they always be a, a beacon of light, Father, for the glory of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Bless this, the remainder of this day now. We ask it in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 You may be seated as the brethren come to the Yes. 